Richard, tell me please about yourself and how did you end up in the inner space and the inner startup space? Um, I first came to China in 2008 um, as part of our parent company's effort to develop a knowledge community, which is like the Silicon Valley type of projects in China. Um, I was in Dalian uh, for a couple of years, and then uh, my parent company decided to uh, bring me over to Shanghai to work on this project, which is uh, really um, trying to build up a cradle of innovation and uh, entrepreneurship uh, for China. So it's not just about providing um, nice uh, office space, uh, amenities and so on, but more to develop the ecosystem where um, startups, uh, companies big and small can come together and work together for mutual benefit. Yeah. Um, one step back, you mentioned Dalian. So why Dalian? I think uh, lots of people actually went through Dalian because at that time, 2010, 2011, it was something big happening there. Can you just a little bit elaborate on that? Uh, Dalian project was a uh, interesting for the parent company point of view in the sense that it was the first time that the parent company, uh, which is a uh, Hong Kong listed developer, take on a mega project uh, of developing a f close to four, uh, 40 million square feet uh, of space for software development. So Andalian, as uh, a lot of people will know, uh, is the hub for software development uh, back in the heydays. Yeah. Coming back to inner space, so what year it was established? Uh, can you give more information about that? And how many locations so far do you have? What cities? Sure. So the, um, uh, from 2011, I was, the parent company uh, brought me back to Shanghai to build this whole ecosystem. So uh, when we first started in the space, uh, that was 2011, uh, we started off as a startup cafe called IPO Club. And since then, uh, over, the nine, uh, over the past nine years, we have now evolved to become a very comprehensive uh, innovation platform for startups and uh, uh, for entrepreneurs. So we currently have got uh, incubators, uh, industry-specific accelerator, uh, a college, a training college, a startup cafe, of course, and a, a VC club plus uh, an investment funds. Uh, we currently operate in six locations across, uh, China, uh, in, across Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Nanjing. Mm. Okay. and. Um I know that you have different programs. You have incubation programs, you have acceleration programs. So can you just a little bit more elaborate uh, on that? Yeah. Uh, our incubator, uh, basically, it's a platform for startups and entrepreneurs uh, that have got uh, are more in the ideation uh, stage. Uh, the service that we provide uh, tend to be more uh, general in nature, um, as opposed to our industry-specific accelerator. Uh, which have got, which are more industry specific, uh, whereby we so called like uh, in the industry specific accelerator, we channel a lot of industry resources, as well as we also run so acceleration program to help startups to get, um, you know, with, with very systematic uh, programs and support system to help them to get a uh, ramp up in the shortest period of time. So to date, um, across our uh, six location. We incubate uh, more than four, 500 plus startups. 30% um, <clears throat> have got uh, overseas background. I will, I will, six year survival rate is about 70%, 70%, which is actually fairly impressive. And over the last few years, we have successfully incubated and accelerated uh, 13 ventures whose valuation exceed US uh, 15 million, 15 million, uh, within 12 months of, it, uh, of its inception. That's very impressive. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the successful cases, successful startups you have incubated so far? Any, any unicorns so far you have in your portfolio? Uh, not really, because we, our focus is really in the very early stage startups. So like, as I said, uh, we currently incubate uh, and there's really about 500 plus startups. A majority of them are actually in the uh, angels and pre-angel stage. So for them to reach uh, unicorn, especially over the last few years, uh, it's actually quite a challenge. Um, having said that, uh, some of our more successful startups include 
like Uta Camera, um, whose value, who, which was actually acquired by uh, Tencent Weibo for uh, 50 million uh, US valuation um, last year. And to date, their valuation is 150 million US. Yeah, and apart from that one, uh, we also have a Lang Langzhou Kezi, which is actually doing uh, exceptionally well. Uh, we also have a startup uh, called Nami Kezi, which is into new materials. Um, if everything goes on well, they might go into, uh, we are hoping, uh, actually they are on track uh, to go for IPO listing uh, in the next uh, 18 months or so. Yeah. Great. Um, as far as I know, uh, InnoSpace also have the funds. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Do you invest uh, also in startups yourself? Yes, we do. Um, we actually started and um, we actually evolved over time, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, in, when we first started in 2011, 2012, our, our incubator was starting in, uh, started in 2012. Um, we realized that uh, by putting uh, as a private sector uh, initiative to be market oriented uh, and so on, uh, we need to really partake uh, in the growth of uh, our startups. Um, really working with them uh, all the way. So that, uh, that also so called like help us, and because we have a stake in the game, in their, in their growth, uh, by investing in them. That sort of helps us to be more uh, effective in terms of the services that we provide to help them to grow uh, in terms of uh, gardening and uh, working with partners, uh, helping them to grow and so on. So in 20, um, at, we first started investing direct investment into the startup in 2013 through our, uh, in, in our first acceleration program uh, by picking up stakes in these startups. Um, but at that point in time, as a direct investment, that was quite difficult um, because we did not have the expertise. Um, but nonetheless, that sort of helped us build up our capability. And in 2015, uh, July, we launched our first uh, angel funds, which was actually quite small then. It was about um, this uh, 6 million US at that point in time. Um, we invested in about 46 projects to date. And um, the survival rate is about 70% currently. Uh, we have got four exits, successful exits so far. And we managed to return about 80% of the investment capital back to our investor um, last year, uh, three years ahead of schedule, actually. So that sort of like put us uh, very well. Uh, in fact, among the top 20% uh, of the uh, uh, investment firms in China, uh, our TVPI is about 4.2, uh, which um, that puts us really uh, among the top. Uh, of the investment firms, of the early investment firms in China. And what are the industries you focus on? Yeah, um, our first funds then uh, focus, it, it's more broad based because we're talking about really uh, very early stage startups. So it tends to be more broad based, uh, focusing on TMT primarily. And uh, uh, within the TMT itself, uh, cloud computing, big data uh, is the mainstay. Uh, we also have got some uh, <coughs> be, uh, quite a few of the B2C type of projects, uh, sports related uh, type of projects as well. Yeah. The, then uh, we also, in 2015, when we first um, we started uh, working with the big corporates, uh, that sort of like helped us to also build up uh, industry expertise. Uh, and 2015 uh, and 2016, 2017, we started to focus in uh, more interesting B2B uh, deeper tech type of technology, which include new materials, uh, 3D printing uh, type of projects, uh, and so on. Can you name three industries that are booming right now and uh, uh, all startup founders actually should pay attention to if they want to succeed uh, in, in the market in China within the next uh, six months? The, um, I think this is really, uh, uh, it's a million dollar question, right? I mean, like that. And for a fund management uh, company, uh, in terms of investment strategy, we really need to take on a longer haul of things. Uh, although there might be certain uh, slight adjustment in terms of our focus. So in that perspective, uh, in our first months, we, ours is more broad based. 
Uh, we are launching uh, our second funds. In fact, we uh, have closed our second funds, um, which is about, let me see, about 20 million. Um, this, uh, we have closed and then looking at launching at end of this month, actually. Yeah, and uh, that will focus on smart manufacturing. As I said, you know, it's a continuation of um, our working uh, relationship with the big multinationals like uh, Siemens uh, and, and so on. Yeah, BMW and so on. Yeah. Um, so smart manufacturing definitely is is uh, what we are looking at right now, and this is more for the longer term because as China progress, if we're talking about let's say the um, strategic direction by the central government. They're using the uh, technology to quickly improve on the efficiency of the service sector. So that's why we see a lot of B2C, very good B2C uh, type of startup coming up. And then now, of course, China being the factory of the world, using technology to improve the uh, productivity as well as efficiency of the factories and the manufacturing line and stuff like that definitely is one area. So the fund two, focusing on smart manufacturing and uh, supply chain management. Uh, our third funds, uh, in fact, we are looking at uh, closing it and launching it uh, end of this year. Uh, we currently uh, are in the final uh, discussion to talk about uh, uh, with a real estate developer. Uh, it will be a CVC type of fund focusing on prop tech uh, in the area of uh, smart uh, future city and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and this is also in light of the current uh, coronavirus uh, kind of a situation whereby uh, we talk about you know systems, talk about uh, uh, urban living. How do we then really use technology to to um, improve or rather the uh, uh, increase the sustainability of urban living? So viral infection, as we see that in, uh, uh, with the COVID nineteen going on, this has become very uh, uh, impetus. There's an impetus for us to also focus on healthy uh, building, um, virus tracking, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So this is definitely one area that we are looking at. Yeah. If we look a little bit about the demographics, right? And like you mentioned, you have um, incubation in different cities, including Shanghai, uh, Nanjing, and Shenzhen. So what would be the difference between the industries that are located in those particular cities? Yeah. Um, when we, uh, we are quite different from uh, a lot of other uh, co-working space in the sense that when we so-called like uh, uh, set up a new location, um, there is a very clear strategic position and direction as to why we do that. Um, we have currently four locations in, in uh, Shanghai. The, of course, this is our flagship. Um, our, the other uh, industry-specific accelerator is in Minghang, and that is working with the Hong Kong uh, Lianfeng Group, focusing on uh, new retail and supply chain um, industry. And it is working with them to actually uh, look for projects and help those projects in this particular field. The uh, Shanghai, obviously, being the uh, uh, commercial hub of China, so a lot of like fintech, uh, design-based kind of a, uh, startups, actually, um, in, in, in Shanghai, yeah. Um, then there are some that are like in Shenzhen. Shenzhen is quite interesting whereby it is a, um, the private sector play is more pervasive there. So we see a lot of uh, the project tend to be more down to earth, more grassroots like, and a lot are focusing in terms of, well, with the uh, South being the factory of China, uh, a lot are focusing in that particular space as well. So AI, app applying uh, application of AI in that, um, in that space. Yeah. So we also see a lot of uh, 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 other interesting type of projects related to manufacturing, smart manufacturing in the South as well. Yeah, then of course, uh, with the Greater Bay Area, integrating with the, um, the value chain uh, that's able to provide by Hong Kong, in terms of the, fin uh, the financial sector, for example, design as well as research uh, capability of Hong Kong. We are seeing quite a lot of interesting projects that actually have got, uh, that, that are actually able to uh, make use of the capability um, of Hong Kong as well as the, 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 the China side of the Greater Bay Area. 
what was the reason behind opening uh, uh, the space uh, in Nanjing? <laughs> uh, Nanjing, actually we did, um, Nanjing wasn't my uh, strategic location to, to, to consider as a location uh, for the longest period of time. But um, in, in retrospective, I am glad that we actually uh, took on the plunge. And the reason for us then to actually, or rather the impetus for us to go into uh, Nanjing uh, has been that um, we were in discussion with uh, Ali for, uh, Alibaba for a long period of time and Alibaba wanted us to uh, go in to help them to, to manage a, uh, an innovation center in Nanjing. So that's the reason why we ended up there. But having said that, uh, we have been in Nanjing since uh, to work on the third quarter of uh, 2018 and over the last year and a half, the uh, Nanjing has turned out quite interestingly in terms of the projects that uh, yield. And I must say that um, it's sort of like, um, it make me rethink uh, about my understanding of you know, the uh, China uh, as a whole. Because there might be certain uh, location which might not be very, uh, intuitively might not be very good uh, breeding ground for good startups, but there are some interesting projects there. And I'm glad that the, we make the venture into, uh, we took the plunge and go into Nanjing. Second tier cities are doing actually great recently in China. Uh, what do you think would be the next uh, location for inner space in China? If you have any plans to expand? Well, we do. Uh, actually, we will, uh, we will on schedule uh, rather um, to launch our next location in Wuhan. In Wuhan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now that with the uh, COVID and, um, and stuff like that, that's sort of like threw our plans uh, uh, upside down. Yeah, and the, the reason for that uh, has been that Wuhan uh, has got very good, um, I mean, it's in the center of uh, China and uh, has got very good uh, talent. Um, and entrepreneurs. So that's the reason why we believe that Wuhan would yield uh, very good projects uh, for our uh, funds and for, for us to look at. Yeah, but now that with the COVID, uh, we really need to reassess it uh, because we, we're not sure whether the, uh, uh, how the situation would be. Yeah. Um, what do you think how the market um, in total is infected by, uh, everyone is talking about the capital winter and not many funds are located right now. So do you think is it a temporal thing? And is it a good or bad uh, uh, thing for, for startups, for the whole scene, startup scene in China? Uh, we have been seeing this capital winter since uh, 2016, 2017, actually. It just, it seems to get deeper and it seems to get uh, colder. Yeah. Um, the, uh, even for, so if we're talking about two dimensions here, right? uh, the two different type of roles that we are playing. Uh, firstly, as an investor, and then the other one is as an incubator or accelerator. Um, <clears throat> as an uh, investor ourselves, our, uh, we have also so-called like um, increased our um, so-called like benchmark uh, in, uh, in terms of how we look at projects, um, our assessment. Uh, as well as the valuation, of course, uh, in terms of before we actually uh, invest in the project, then uh, we are actually spending a lot more time uh, in terms of due diligence as well. Uh, and due diligence is not just about, um, we are spending more time uh, not just about uh, due diligence on the company, but also uh, on uh, the type of uh, partners uh, or potential clients that we might be able to so-called like bring in. To, to help this uh, our potential uh, portfolio uh, company, yeah. So that is, that has been on the front on the um, um, as an investor. Now as an incubator and accelerator, uh, we the capital winter has actually also put on a lot of pressure onto us, in a sense that um, quite a lot of our projects uh, because they haven't been able to get. Um, the capital needed, um, which is very unfortunate because some of them are actually very good. You know, they just, uh, this, they're not able to expand and some of them have unfortunately have to uh, this fall up. Yeah. But fortunately, the, as I said, the, uh, we're still able to 
uh, maintain and uh, maintain our very high survival rate, uh, about 70% for six years. Uh, you also mentioned about that 30% uh, of the portfolio is actually foreign startups or international startups. Mm -hmm. Can you just give more details in that? Um, is it, is it uh, what countries, demographics? Sure. The, um, but of course, the, uh, out of the 30%, about 80 plus percent actually have got uh, are returning Chinese. Uh, so majority of them, uh, or rather quite a few of them, have worked in uh, the US um, uh, and, and so on, and, uh, if, and as well as Europe. Uh, we also have got some pure foreign, uh, or rather some startups by pure foreigners team. So we have got a Polish, uh, we have got uh, Japanese, Koreans, uh, Singapore as well. Um, basically, I think out of the, uh, if I were to make an evaluation, probably about uh, among the thirty percent, we probably see a lot more in Asia, um, from Asia, now Northeast Asia uh, as well as Singapore as well, and the reason for that has also been that. Uh, because of the acceleration program that we have uh, uh, been conducting over the last few years, um, the, we do have got uh, quite a few overseas government agencies as well as the organization um, engaging us to run acceleration program for, them, for their startups. So that's the reason why the, uh, 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 like the Korean government, for example, they, they have been working with us since 2016. Uh, 2017, 2018, and so on. So, you know, there are a lot of more Koreans coming over, uh, which we help. So, you know, Koreans uh, make up a, buck, uh, a large bulk of it. Uh, and last year, we started working with the uh, with IDA from uh, Italy. So, we also have such seeing uh, Italian startups coming over here as well. Yeah. Lots of foreign founders here in China. They have pretty many. Uh, challenges to run startups in China. Absolutely. Can you just think uh, about uh, some common challenges that startup founders have and how you at InnoSpace address those issues and help them to overcome these obstacles? Yeah, um, we do uh, work with startups, uh, not just as an incubator or accelerator, but also we, in fact, we also invest in some foreign startups. Uh, but of course, in the Chinese entity of the foreign startups. And the reason why I said that, um, Really, that um, there are some very good uh, quality startups uh, from overseas as well. So we actually treat both local and foreign startups the same uh, in terms of evaluations, in terms of helping them. Uh, but having said that, the support that are needed by the foreign startups to do well in China, it's um, you know they need a lot more support than the local ones. And the reason for that has been that um, you need more localization. Customizations, yeah. Um, um, so from beginning, when we started looking for B two C type of project, um, foreign startups actually um, find that harder because it's the whole market sensitivity which they are not quite familiar with. So, but uh, in 2015, 2016, when we start looking at B two C, a B two B type of projects, then there are a lot more uh, support that we are able to provide them effectively. I mean, like the, when you talk about B2B, type of project is we help them to open doors, uh, work with the multinationals and stuff like that. So at that point in time, it's really the technology, the know-how that comes into play. Yeah, so the, uh, in that perspective, uh, it's much easier uh, for foreign startups to look into than, you know, that, to, to, to look into in China than the, pure, the, the B2C type of play. Yeah, so we help, uh, uh, the, in fact, we have been working with the big uh, multinationals, big companies since 2015, focusing on different uh, domain and different uh, industry. So currently, in fact, we also work with um, uh, Sino Group from Hong Kong. Uh, they have set up an innovation lab uh, in our Sinchun uh, base to look at PropTech, for example. Yeah, so, and PropTech is something which, again, they have got certain technology that goes into, you know, like um, making a, build, a building or development smarter, for example, zero carbon emission uh, and so on and so forth, which if the foreign startups have got certain solutions and uh, we could through that platform introduce that to a Sino group uh, in Hong Kong and then that can be applied to their projects both in Hong Kong as well as in mainland.
So, uh, and that includes uh, even uh, hotels, for example. They, they have got hotels, they have got uh, uh, luxury residences, uh, you know, retail space, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also work with Zhonghaiyou uh, Sinot, uh, China National Oil, China National Oil Corporations, yeah, so which is the, the third largest petroleum company in China. But in terms of offshore, offshore oil production, they are the largest. So we, they have got uh, uh, two innovation lab, uh, as well as an uh, R&D lab with us in Shenzhen as well. So focusing on um, the supply, manage, uh, supply chain type of projects um, in that space. I know the Chinese government is quite supportive in terms of uh, startups and innovation, and there are lots of grants available as well for startups, including foreign startups. Mm -hmm. But what I see the big challenge is the communication gap, and many startups actually don't know how to get those grants. And I think uh, InnoSpace and other incubators, uh, those are the people who are helping to align all these requirements and to get these uh, funds. Do you have any successful examples where startups actually got those funds? Uh, yes, actually, the, uh, this is, uh, in fact, a big major uh, effort that we put in uh, under the basic services uh, that we provide for our incubators, um, helping them to get uh, government support and grant. But having said that, um, this is something more like a bonus. Yeah, primarily, the, uh, we help comp uh, this, the startups to position their solutions correctly. Um, if there are some technology uh, gap and shortfall, we help them to fine tune it, uh, be it through uh, IP licensing or to help them to, 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 to bridge the uh, technology gap. Um, so the government support and all this are bonus. First of all, they need to survive on their own. They need to have a market uh, traction on their own, which we help them on that front. Then as part of the other support is obviously if the government can provide uh, additional support, uh, why not? You know, so, so that's the part that we come in and help them to do. So we actually uh, uh, work with the, uh, closely with the uh, Yangpu district, which is actually the hub for innovation entrepreneurship for uh, Shanghai. That's the only hub demarcated by uh, the, the central government in Beijing. Yeah. So the, there are a lot of uh, support like that, uh, which we actually provide. Um, we also work with the banks. Uh, they are also looking at doing some micro loans, etc. So recently, we have got uh, the China Bank of China uh, that actually uh, have come up with an interesting micro loan kind of package uh, at very minimal uh, uh, interest rates and require require very little collateral, etc. and stuff like that um, to help them. So we actually uh, so called like help uh, startups to, to get that loan. Then in terms of the government support, that has been ongoing. And I don't think that uh, at this point in time, it's really um, uh, uh, they are very, uh, how do you say, outstanding cases, which I can highlight. But because the other incubators or co-working space of which are already doing that. Yeah. But some of our startups are actually getting a lot of, like, Singta, um, for example. Um, if you look at the, uh, that's the other support that we provide, uh, helping them in terms of media vis um, profiling and visibility. So they are into a lot of all these uh, TV channels, uh, whatever that, uh, that are, uh, whatever the, uh, TV programs focusing on startups and entrepreneurship um, in different parts of China, they will be featured. <laughs> yeah, so, they are, uh, so this is something which also help them, we really help these projects to profile themselves. How do you scout for startups and how selective are you? Um, we are quite fortunate uh, that we started off fairly early compared to the other players. Uh, so over the last few years, a lot of this, um, this uh, we have built up a certain uh, reputation for ourselves. And some, a lot of the good startups, they come to us because they know that uh, we are bona fide uh, incubators and accelerator, uh, as well as an incubator, uh, or, or rather, uh, as well as an investor. So they, they would come their way. Then obviously we also have got some um, the uh, our startups. We actually have got a, a strong network of alumni, so we currently have got 500 plus startups, as I said. So they also become some of them have graduated from our programs and moved out. So they also form a very good a good source of uh, projects, and then they refer uh, good projects to us and so on. 
Uh, then the other source are those uh, companies that we work with. Uh, companies such as uh, uh, Siemens, uh, BMW, um, CNOT, Sino Group, and so on and so forth. So they know that uh, what we are focusing on, and then they would channel uh, startups for us uh, to us. Before we wrap up this interview, I would like to ask, uh, can you give a couple of advices uh, for startups if they want to enter the China market? What they should pay attention to, uh, how they can find all these resources available in the market? Mm -hmm. I think the uh, China is very uh, competitive. I mean, like the uh, um, the Chinese startups as well as the entrepreneurs themselves, they are very smart people, and they are very hungry, and they are um, they will give a run for the foreign startups, a run for their money. Right? So you really have to be here and full time really um, be prepared for that kind of a competition. Yeah? So the, um, for, the kind, uh, for many startups that we work with from foreign, uh, in, in other countries, um, many of them actually have got existing uh, operation in their home country. Um, so it's a question about, and for startups, unfortunately, unlike the bigger companies, um, startups do not have the resources to help them to come and test out the water, uh, try out their luck, and so on like that. So it, it, China is not, it doesn't give the luxury of time as well as the uh, resources for a lot of startups. So the advice which I gave to many of the foreign startups that we work with, that you really need to make a decision. You say that, how do you see China? If China is indeed the market, your most important market, you have to, um, my advice is to focus on China. You cannot have got a, a team that's straddled between, uh, for example, Korea and China, even though Korea and China is so close by. Right? You cannot focus on both. You really need to um, focus on China full time. So in China, uh, in, in the Chinese language, there is a uh, two word called se te. Um, you se, sai te. You need to give up something before you can obtain something or you can achieve something. It's just like, uh, it's like, it's just like a mug, a cup. Right? The, you need to haul away the existing water so that you can feel more water inside. Right? Otherwise, if the water is half, uh, half filled, you can only have, fill in half. And China, you know, they, with the uh, very competitive market and stuff like that, is just not able to, to like, you know, try out your luck and stuff like that. You will get burnt. Yeah. So you really need to be focused. If China is indeed the market, you have to go all out for it. Yeah. And uh, in fact, this is also the part that we uh, 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 focus on when we so-called like, um, evaluate projects for investment. How dedicated they are uh, in the Chinese market and whether or not they have uh, what it takes to survive in China. Because at the end of the day, you know, like the, we're talking about China. Great advice. How startups can find more information about InnoSpace? Uh, well, from our website, yeah, uh, www.innospace.com.cn. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. I hope this is uh, useful for the uh, uh, our friends in overseas. <laughs>